In this video, we will be talking about parallel lines and transversals. Parallel lines are lines that do not cross. A transversal is a line that passes through two or more lines. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, there are different angle pairs that are formed. So if we take a look at this diagram here, I have the two parallel lines. I can tell these are parallel because of the marking on those lines. And then this line here, that is our transversal. So when we are given two parallel lines cut by a transversal, there are four main types of angle pairs that are formed. Alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, and same side interior. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to list each of the angle pairs. So alternate interior angles, those are angles that are in between uh, the parallel lines that takes care of the interior part and they're on opposite or alternate sides of the transversal. The two examples are angle three and angle six, and then angle four and angle five is another pair. Okay, so again, those, each of those pairs are in between the parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate exterior angles. These are outside, hence the exterior part, outside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So our examples, angle one and angle eight and angle two and angle seven. Corresponding angles are angles that are in matching location. So for instance, angle one and angle five, they're both in the top left of their little section. So if you look at the picture, there's like these four angles up here, these four angles down here. In each of those sections, one and five are in the top left. So therefore those are called corresponding angles. Our other corresponding angles would be two and six, three and seven, and four and eight. Lastly, we have same side interior angles. Well, we've talked about interior already that that means they're in between the parallel lines, but same side means they're on the same side of the transversal rather than on alternate sides of the transversal. So our examples would be angle three and angle five, and then four and six. If I take a look at this picture, one thing that I like to do, um, and we're going to just assume for a second here that this picture is drawn to scale, okay, um, is I like to color code it. So it says color all the angles that appear to be acute in one color, okay? So assuming this is drawn to scale, angles two, three, six, and seven appear to be acute angles. And it says color all the angles that appear to be obtuse in a different color. So that would be one, four, five, and eight. If I take a look at it here, it says if the angles are the same color, we're gonna fill in the rule that they are congruent. If the angles are different colors, this means they are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So if I take a look at it, the alternate interior angles, so let's say like three and six, those angles are going to be congruent to one another because if I look at each of those pairs, they have a matching color. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent by the same reason. If I look at one of those pairs, one and eight, their colors match. Corresponding angles, congruent again. If I look at any pair, let's say one and five, their colors match. And lastly, same side interior angles, this is our different example. They are different colors. So look at angle three and five, for instance. Therefore, they are supplementary and they add up to 180 degrees. Now let's practice some sample questions um, regarding parallel lines and transversals. And keep in mind the diagram is may not be drawn to scale. If I look at number one, using the picture below, name both pairs of alternate interior angles. So again, we want in between the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle three and angle five are an example and angle four and angle six. 
If I take a look at number two, using the picture below, name all pairs of corresponding angles. These are our matching angles, right? So again, remember you have like this set of four up here, this set of four down here, which angles are in matching locations. So angle two and angle six are both in the top left. Angle one and angle five are both in the top right. Angle three and angle seven, both bottom left, and angle four and eight are both in the bottom right. Number three, using the giving, given angle of 118 degrees, fill in all seven remaining angles. So this is an example where we're going to utilize our rules from the front that if angles are alternate interior, they are congruent to one another. If they're alternate exterior, they are congruent to one another. If they're corresponding, they're congruent to one another. But if they're same side interior, they are supplementary instead. One way I also like to look at this question is to utilize some of our old facts that we might already know, such as vertical angles are congruent to one another. Okay, so for instance, that 118, this tells me the, this is 118 as well, because those are vertical angles and they're congruent. I also might use some facts about um, a linear pair and that a linear pair, the two angles in the linear pair are supplementary. Therefore, this becomes 62 degrees. I have a lot of different facts I can use in order to fill in the missing angles. So what I like to do is fill in one section first. So for instance, these top four, and then I like to use my corresponding angles. So if I look at this 118 here, over here where I'm highlighting, that's a matching location. Those are corresponding angles, and we said they are congruent, so that makes that 118 as well. Using that information, I now can repeat and use all of the other corresponding angles to fill them in. And I can verify that all of my other relationships are true. So what I mean by that is, for instance, are the alternate interior angles congruent? 62 and 62, yes, those are alternate interior, they're congruent. I could use the 118s next to them as well. Are the alternate exterior angles congruent? So let's say these two. Yep, those came out to be the same measure. We already talked about the corresponding angles being congruent. And then let's look at the same side interior angles. So these two that I highlighted are on the same side of the transversal in between the parallel lines and they are supplementary. So same side interior angles are supplementary. I see 118 plus 62 does equal 180. So then I know I've done that correctly. Once you get the hang of that, the questions become very similar and repetitive. So if I look at number four, given that 99, I can very quickly fill in all of the surrounding angles and then basically copy them down to the second set of angles below. All right, let's just look at two questions that are algebraic. If I take a look at number five, first it might help if you decide what type of angles you have here. So I know in this problem that I have alternate interior, excuse me, alternate exterior angles, which are congruent to one another. So using that information, I'm going to set 17x minus 4 equal to 12 plus 15x. I'm going to get the variables on one side, get the numbers on another side, and when I solve, I get x is equal to 8. If I take a look at number 6, these two angles are same side interior. And we said that that means that they are supplementary to each other. So x plus x plus 62 equals 180. And if you even just think about this logically with common sense for a second, there's no way for x and x plus 62 to be equal to one another. So it wouldn't make sense to use the relationship that they're congruent. They have to be supplementary, therefore. So combine like terms. And then let's work to isolate the variable. When I solve, I get that x is 59. Hopefully this lesson helps you understand parallel lines and transversals and the four angle relationships that come about from those, from those parallel lines and transversals.